I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. And joining me today is Shane Morgan. Thank you, Shane, for coming and Absolutely. sharing this amazing journey that we've both been on. Is, yes, is that right? It's very much so. It's been amazing. So as we often do, uh, where were you born and what's your kind of your background a little bit? Uh, born and raised in Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. And uh, come from a large family of eight. Oh my goodness, where were you, where'd you fit in with all I that? I was the youngest, oh, youngest of eight. Were you the spoiled boy? <laughs> uh, I got a lot of love. Did you? Yeah. Oh, that's neat. So, were your parents uh, members of the church? Absolutely, that, yeah, married oh, were. in the temple. Were and, they? Mm -hmm. Your dad serve any uh, Not that, that I remember? recall. Yeah. Um, just was... Uh, was just active. And yeah, all. active and... and Make sure, made sure we were all at church on time, and yeah. And you didn't live far from the church, I no, heard No, a couple you say. doors up from the <laughs> from the church. So it didn't take you long to get there, huh? No, we <laughs> trooped down as a family, and yeah. And well, that's neat. Took so, up a whole bench. Oh yeah, so yeah, I'm sure you did with ten of you there. Yeah. For, so uh, what what goes on in life? You just you go to school, I guess, and there. Yeah, uh, went to school area. right behind my house. Uh, Curtis Elementary and uh, was mainly just uh, growing up as a normal young yeah. young Mormon boy. You became a deacon, did you? Got yes. baptized at eight, I guess, yes. and then deacon and teacher and all that stuff. And uh, Yes, I yeah. made it to a teacher. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay. You were telling me that you uh, started seminary, but was one of those uh, take it easy classes for it you. It was. I attended uh, about half the time. And uh, there's others like that, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, <laughs> but I really liked my teacher. Did you? And learned, you know, what uh, what little bit I took in from yeah. seminary, what I was able to. Well, do you? I know it's it's a youthful look at things, but did you feel like you thought the church was true? I mean, you 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 had family that went on missions. And, yes, and absolutely. Stuff, the and majority of my family served a mission. Yeah. Uh, I want to say that. Yeah. Uh, was there any question that it was true or not true? Well, I, uh, I had a testimony, I thought. Yeah. You know, but I was mainly just saying what I had heard other people say about uh, knowing the church is true and that Joseph yeah. Smith is a true prophet. Did you ever dive into the Book of Mormon at all? And... I didn't. Yeah. Um, I never, I don't think I ever had one till later. Really? Yeah. Okay. There was many in the home, but... Uh, yeah, nothing that you spend any time looking at. Huh? Right. So what happens after high school? Um, I kind of go on a rebellious state, just kind of <laughs> living earthly. Yeah. What would your parents think of that? Well, uh, I lost my mom when I was eight years old. Oh. So uh, she uh, passed with breast ca cancer, and oh. so that was hard on the family and especially my father. Oh. But... Uh, because I was, if you will, the black sheep of the family. I uh, just because you were yeah. rebellious there. A little yeah. Bit. yeah, and uh, just kind of partied and yeah. and wasn't focused on uh, the Mormon Church or any you know religion or or. So Jesus were you going matter. regularly to church? Or um, that at that point, I had just Sundays was a day off. Yeah. I, now, just kind of thinking, you know, so having served in callings like I have, we always had lists of young men that were what we called inactive or yeah. less attenders or something. Yeah. Um, did people call you and contact you yes. and try to encourage you back in? Yeah, to... and I, I, uh, I've i seen my the teacher that I remember, they, he brought his class and we had Sunday school on my front lawn. Oh, really? Or, uh, you know... Uh, effort to make you feel... 
welcome. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they reached out to me quite a bit, and I felt the love. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, this okay. guy was uh, really good to me. Oh, good. Well, and sometimes those friendships last forever, too. You know, Absolutely. They, okay, so what happens in your rebelliousness? Did oh, you, just uh, not, not specifically, but I mean, yeah, you, you go um, off and you go to school and uh, no school. Do? I yeah. uh, went to the school of hard knocks. Okay, uh, I had to learn everything the hard way. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, you know whether, no matter what it was, with the law or uh, doing <laughs> things unhealthy and yeah, and uh, realized that that was going nowhere fast. Oh, okay. And how long did that go on? Oh, probably from age. <clears throat> 18 to probably close to age 30. Yeah. What and did you think of Jesus and God and the Bible and that kind uh, of stuff? I had. At this I, point? I knew that there was a God. Yeah. And I would often pray. Not often, but I would pray when necessary. <laughs> when you needed some help or something. Yes. <laughs> so I did. I did have, and and Jesus is always. I've you know, knew he existed and that he died on the cross and yeah. and I was aware of that but never really put it in with uh, a relationship or something in your daily life and all that. Did uh, you well, ever no, it wasn't. Yeah. Did you feel like you'd come back to the church when you got your life figured out kind of thing? Well, um, I believe I was a I was thirty and I married. Oh okay. and we had two kids, a boy and a girl, Aubrey and Jake. Yeah. Hi. Um, uh, and they, they were about one and three years old, and we received a flyer on our door that was a four-week seminar on parenting. Oh. And we thought, hey, that sounds good. It was a non-denominational Christian church that invited us. In your neighborhood there? Uh, they were just up from us, up, yeah. you know, uh, uh, still in Sandy. Okay. And we, I really didn't know much about Christianity. I know that uh, I had a, an acquaintance that uh, his, he was a Christian. Yeah. And I had never really asked him about it or, <laughs> but this was a Christian church, non-denominational. I thought, well, that sounds like my can't hurt too bad. Let's no. go and check out parenting, huh? So yeah. You guys did that? Yes. Yeah, so it was a four-week seminar, and uh, at the end of that fourth week is when uh, the pastor uh, put it out there that, um, how you doing running your own life? Would you like to turn it over to Jesus and uh, believe in what he did for me? Yeah. And... Had you yeah. ever thought of that before? No. Yeah. No, yeah. this was the first time I think the gospel had ever been shared to, with me. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. What, uh, who it's, this Jesus is. Huh? Yeah, and on that, on that day, uh, he asked if you prayed that prayer just to look at him, and I looked at him, and, and uh, we talked afterwards, and, and uh, he came to my home like a week later, and we did a diagram that helped me to understand exactly what I'd done, and and it was uh, freedom from there on. Really? Yeah. Kind of your born again moment then, was it? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, there's a little, just prior to that, uh, my brother, I have a particular brother that's interested in getting me back into coming to the, the LDS church, and he says, okay, well, that's neat that you're going to a Christian church, but will you at least allow the... Uh, missionaries to come by and show you what they, you know, show you their... Teach you the gospel. <laughs> teach you their, their gospel. Their gospel. And I said, sure. And I had told my pastor about that, and he mentioned, Shane, I, I can appreciate the fact that you, wanted, that you want to do that. Do you mind if I'm there? Oh. And I said, no, not whatsoever. Sure. So he and a, bro and a fellow brother at the Rock Church... Uh, uh, showed up with, so instead of the two missionaries, it was like the missionary president in that region and the more advanced missionary that showed up. Wow. And we all sat down outside and uh, um, before we even dwelt in, on the, on the uh, lesson, yeah. my pastor asked, now before we talk about this, who is Jesus? 
and he just asked that he asked that to the missionaries yeah and then followed up with a few more questions that just had him a little bit taken back <laughs> and it, the, the no lesson took place because we were on a different page as to who Jesus was oh and do you remember what they said <laughs> I don't remember word for word but I just know that uh, they, they seemed a little bit frustrated yeah and I don't I'm not so sure um, they had very good answers either yeah uh, well and I think too uh, I can't speak for those missionaries or, or whoever they whoever came representing the church but in many ways their knowledge of the Bible and uh, is probably very limited or at yeah. least in scope and, and yeah. they don't know Greek and Hebrew and all the the details of the of the Bible and so to come up against a pastor might be a little <laughs> intimidating. Uh, I, I, I got that what, feeling, yes. You did. The youngster didn't say much and the, sure. the other guy, so that, that sent me into a deep study of the differences of Christianity versus Mormonism. Really? And, what did you learn? Well, the first, I think the first thing that popped up, I had a computer at the time and this has been a little over 17 years ago. Oh my goodness. And so the, it was basic, but yeah. uh, it was a side-by-side -side comparison of who the Jesus of the Bible is <laughs> and who the Jesus of Mormonism is. Yeah. And I just, the more I studied and the more I prayed about it and the more research I did, the more I realized that uh, we do have two different Jesuses. And you probably had never thought of that before. Until, no, you know. I was shocked, as a matter of fact. When I came out of the church, I knew a lot of the bad news, you know, some of uh -huh. the negative stuff. But I thought I was pretty good with Jesus. You know, I didn't know there was a problem there. And then I started learning that I didn't, I had a Mormon Jesus as well. And Well, tell us a little bit about the differences. I mean, let's just uh, flesh that out a little bit. Well, um, the whole thought of the pre-existence, or that you know that was a big difference that he was our older brother there yeah. in the pre-existence uh -huh. yeah not god but just yes just a, and it, an uh, older brother satan was our brother uh not a fallen angel um mainly a lot of it to also was to do with the bible yeah because i also researched that can i trust my handbook for life yeah. Can I trust this? And so I did a lot of research on that and the differences between the gospel that Mormonism teaches. And Isn't that surprising? It's night and day. Yeah, that eighth article of faith is just the, the, the Bible can only be trusted as far as it's translated correctly. You know, It just puts a doubt there that Mormons just, I know they carry their Bibles every week to church, but they just don't have much love or respect for it the, right. until you finally come around. Well, what did uh, what happened after that? Then, uh, did your wife also come along with you? And yeah, yeah. She, uh, we were faithful every Sunday. We looked forward to it. Going to the, to the Christian church. Yeah. Huh? And, and the message. What was the message? The, I mean, the first time you went, for example, did you sense a difference then that you had in their Mormon? Absolutely, and Mormon I'm glad church? you brought that up because those four weeks, it's like he was speaking right to me. <laughs> The things I was doing right, the things I wasn't doing right, yeah. uh, things I needed to work on, yeah. and I knew that uh, it, it just rang true to me. Yeah. There was no doubt that what he was teaching was true. Yeah, and did you, you went to worship services too, I guess, uh -huh. and, and how was that compared to? Oh, um, I was... Uh, Pleasantly surprised. I mean, I'm I I'm okay with with that type of worship, uh, guitars, yeah. drums, and you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's worship. A little different, but That's it was it. worshiping Jesus, and absolutely, that, that was so different. The words and everything is all about about Jesus, as opposed to some of the other stuff. And yeah, yeah. Well, and I wanted to bring up also after getting saved, um, I kind of I'm always asking questions to my pastor and and anyone that. Uh, has some time in the Christianity and what's what do I do next well you should be baptized mm. and so it was a couple weeks out and we uh, during that service during worship 
they sang a song, You Are My King. Mm. And that has lyrics in it that you're my king and you should die for me. And that really choked me up. I mean, at that time, I thought, wow, Jesus really does love me. Isn't that amazing? Even the way I am, he yeah. loves me. And that was huge for me also, just uh, the worship through those lyrics. I think during that momentous time in our life when we're kind of coming to grips with the truth of Mormonism and yet learning about this new Jesus and trusting the Bible, don't you think almost like you were saying these these different experiences you have just have such impact on our lives because they're so new to us, don't you think? Absolutely. No, uh, the messages, again, not just those four, but uh, they were all meant, they all just so, rang so true to me. Yeah. You know, that, uh, that I am a sinner no matter what. Yeah. I do. And through Jesus, I'm accepted. And had, forgiven. Had you ever understood grace before? No. No, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> undeserved favor, when I, I realized that that's the true meaning, that uh, yeah. something I don't deserve, that gave me a whole new look at... And a free gift. I mean, it, it's so simple, but it's so godlike in my mind, is, is here, here he has given us this free gift if we'll just believe. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a and, and we don't get that in in our no. previous life, in our Mormonism, do we? I mean, it's not, it's no. work, work, work. And, and then when we fall short, we feel guilty and shame. And, and well, I, I was always under the impression God was putting down black marks for each. <laughs> I got a black mark, and that was kind of a yeah. running joke. I'm going to have to black answer for, for that. <laughs> yeah. And so that's yeah. all I thought he did was keep track of what I did wrong not thinking that he really loves us and that he gave himself for us. Yeah. Yeah, what a joyous message that is. And why don't Mormons, why can't we get through to them? I'm sure you've had experiences with family and others. And yes, absolutely. Maybe trying to share. Now you're a black sheep of the family the other way, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm still loved by my family very much. Yeah, um, sure. They're glad that I have God in my life. Yeah. And. But in answer to your question there, uh, when I've talked to my family about it, um, or what I've been told is they just are told not to uh, research anything that would be negative towards the, the church. The church. Yeah. And my family, Shane, this is your heritage. This is what our parents, their parents, this is, you know, we're... This came all the way back from the pioneers crossing the plains, and you know, uh, why do you have hard, such a hard time believing it? Yeah. Well, do they notice a change in your life? I mean, I'm sure they a have. New, you're a new creature now, I'm sure, from yeah. what you've been saying. Yeah. They, you think they have, but nobody comes to you and and asks you what you learned, I guess, or anything. Not so much. Yeah. Um, they have noticed a change. I, yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, so uh, Now, during this period of study, you probably learned some of this negative stuff I was talking mm -hmm. about, maybe some of the polyandry and the stuff, but did you, um, you mentioned that, or have, did you read any books or be um, acquainted with anything that kind of helped you in, absolutely. Your, in your journey? During, I was working on my own at the time, and uh, so it gave me a lot of time to, if I wanted to, I would listen to books on tape. Oh, yeah. And The Case for Christ was was huge for me. Case for um, Christ. That's... By Lee Strobel. It's read, read by him, so yeah. I was able to understand exactly the way he wanted you to, to, hear it. to read it and hear it, and that's not my best quality reading, so I listened to it, and then I listened to it again, and just uh, was amazed at... at uh, it's so at, supportive, I guess, of, yes. of what you were sensing and learning and stuff. Yeah. Anything else? I know you did mention a couple of pastors that you, you like to listen to. And yes, uh, Charles Stanley yeah. is a, one that I listen to often. McDonald, uh, uh, oh, please. I. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but, but there's uh, some James wonderful McDonald. James McDonald. Okay, and Josh McDowell. There's yeah, some really good ones there, and out I, there. I thrive on that because yeah. I get more lessons uh, daily. Yeah. 
and just and just start and we you know it's funny we had some guest once that said that her family said well you Christians all you have is Jesus <laughs> and we it struck us all so funny because it, it's such a such a funny way to say it but what do we need more than that right <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, the the passion I watched the passion oh. of the Christ and that was uh, it gave me a whole new outlook on you know what really happened when you see yeah. maybe pictures of Jesus on the cross he may have a few dribbles of blood here and there but he was he actually was, he was pretty well tortured worked huh? over pretty good yeah yeah those are and there's a great time of year this won't probably air for a couple of months but you know for right for us right now it's Easter time yes and it's such a wonderful time of the year to kind of reflect on that that wonderful sacrifice and, yes, absolutely. and how much he loves us well, you've um, you've been through so much, I guess, and um, you've. I know you've served in some uh, at your church and all. What uh, yeah, kind of I was, things have I'd you done? Yeah, I had been going to the the church to church for about a year and got. Uh, you know, I was grounded in my faith, and they yeah. asked me to be a Sunday school teacher. Really, which I really enjoyed. And that went well. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> seeing those young little hearts and brains wondering about what's what they're there for and they were young I, I think I had uh, well it was a variety but through yeah. sixth grade uh, kinder, preschool through sixth grade and you're telling them all about Jesus and stories and, and yeah I, I had prepared lessons that I yeah. studied and then gave them on now Sundays. 20 30 years ago did you ever think this was going to be you up there not a chance <laughs> Not a chance. Doesn't no. God work in mysterious and miraculous ways? Huh? Well, it's glad I'm glad that it was a simple thing. It wasn't something I had to do yeah. aside from you know believe and yeah. put my faith in in Jesus Christ. Yeah. But but that pamphlet just kind of turned your life around. Didn't it, it did. Yeah. It was very. It was meant for me. <laughs> and the message. Well, let's see. I was going to ask you about. Um, uh, in coming to Christianity, you know, it's uh, uh, there's so many LDS that will either become agnostic or even atheist because they don't have a relationship with with Jesus, or at least in our perspective now as a Christian. Did you sense that at all, or did, were you able to move right? Oh, I was able to move right into yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't. I never uh, was agnostic or. Yeah, have you run into people though that yes, have, have and that? I. I got it so easy. I just have a, can't figure out why other people. Yeah, it is simple. You know, it's a simple thing to the gospel is very simple. Yeah, and uh, well, I sense that too. I mean, we made that transition. We started going to a Bible study, mm -hmm. and I think you've attended that too. Yes, that Bible study. Uh, I've hosted small groups at my home. Have you? Yeah, we did. We were into that. That's what kind of what we got into after teaching. Oh. And how was that? Was that did that work out well? It did. <clears throat> it did. Uh, um, we had I, we could we could do whatever we wanted to, and yeah. I would do some. I did a a uh, study with James that James McDonald had on video uh, called "I Really 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 Want to Change." And that was a format that you used. Yeah, for and we'd watch, and then I'd have quite Q and A, and then we'd talk, and the small groups were great. It was. Uh, a good experience really for me. supportive I guess for, yeah. for everybody that participates in uh -huh. that kind of thing well gosh uh, we've asked you about the books um, did you ever sense a moment when you thought gosh uh, you know when you've said you've had family try to get you back mm -hmm. did you ever think well gosh maybe the church is true what what kind of pulled you no not with the research that I've done um, the minute you insert man into religion I think things go south yeah and I learned that it's a relationship well, just with Jesus yeah, yeah. if uh, you focus on a relationship with Jesus fellowship and learn at your church uh, and grow yeah that that's that's all you need and uh, my brothers are very <laughs> uh, proactive in trying to get me to uh, rethink things yeah now, do you ever approach them with, uh, I know the 
gospel essays or topics. Are you aware of those from the LDS.org? Yes. Um, are, I also are they willing those. to look at those? Are they um, willing to look at those? I, have, I don't know that it would be from me that they would... Uh, Pick that up? <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I'm not... I don't know. Maybe God has that for me, but... Yeah. Um, well, it's, it just seems like it's there. You know, the church has put out some information about the different different topics, and you know, I just wonder if, if people ever listen to read those. And I've run into so many LDS that don't even know they're out there. So, yeah, I was yeah. convinced by the time I had done my so, research that I knew as much or more than most Mormons about their <laughs> history and yeah. Their beliefs. And, yeah. And then this relationship, which is so special, it's, it's God-centered, not man-centered. Yeah. And I think that's so important. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes left. You want to, anything you want to say to your family and friends? Absolutely, and, yeah. yeah. Um, the way I looked at it when I was early in Christianity and became a Christian, um, I looked at it as if I were to take everything I had, money, everything, and invest it into one thing. I would want to research that investment, that investment that was going to give, wow. give, me, uh, what a good point. give me a life yeah. long, you know, a good life. Yeah. I, would, I would want to research that, not take someone's word or not just because, you know, everyone else did it. I would want to research it and investigate it get counsel about it and I would you know I would just uh, ask for that uh, family friends uh, anyone who's on the fence just research it a little bit and it is an investment you're investing your salvation your eternity yeah. and that was important to me so I did that and it made it real easy for me to make that decision oh praise God That's yeah. Well, and I think some sometimes it is just a matter of getting them to be willing to look. Yeah. You know, and to not not to go into it with the idea that I'm gonna that I'm going at anti Mormon or proving the yeah, church I was wrong. Never but, just, or... but just in fact we love the Mormons. Absolutely. It's just this Mormonism that requires works, temple work and tithing and all those things to be saved. And uh we don't have, I mean, a, a Christian is resting in Jesus and what he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Any last second thoughts? We only got about a couple of seconds. Left. I just uh, <laughs> praise God and uh, without him, I wouldn't be the man I am today and uh, I'm well, content with that. And I well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Praise God and, and pray for your family, yeah. you know, my family and all those that if they just look and study and trust in God, huh? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Shane. Thanks for coming. And Thank you. We'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files.